Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here back with another video. So as I'm sure most of you know by now, this past weekend Campbell Hatton, who is of course the son of Ricky Hatton, had his first official defeat as a professional. Now, the reason I say official defeat is because there's been at least one fight, maybe even two, where he probably should have already lost. Um, the fight that comes to mind, and I haven't seen every one of Campbell Hatton's fights, but the one that I've seen which comes to mind was the... Uh, fight he had against that Spaniard, Sonny Martinez, on the undercard of uh, Usyk versus AJ, where he clearly got beaten up in four rounds of a six-round fight and still ended up somehow getting the decision. Uh, that was one that I think was a, a bit of a high-profile robbery that was kind of a kind of a topic for discussion at the time. Uh, and since then, you know, Campbell Hatton has kind of lingered at that same level. And now he's officially been defeated. I don't know much about the opponent who beat him. What's his name? James Flint. Something like that. Never heard of the guy before. Don't really care, to be honest. But yeah, this video's about Campbell Hatton. Now, something about Campbell Hatton, and I've actually wanted to talk about this for a while. Something about him and about the way his career has gone and j just kind of the position he was put into really, really rubs me up the wrong way and really, really highlights... What, in my personal opinion, is one of the biggest problems with boxing. So, Campbell Hatton came on the scene a few years back, where he made his professional debut on the undercard of a pretty big heavyweight title fight, right? And he was put up the peck in order. He was, I think, 18 years old. Uh, didn't have much of an amateur career. I think he had about 30 fights, which, you know, that's not a, a small amount of fights by any standard, but... It's not the amount of fights, and it's certainly not the kind of level of amateur pedigree where you would expect to see a fighter making his professional debut on TV on the undercard of a heavyweight title fight. You know, you don't expect that from somebody of that level. Of course, the only reason why that happened, and the only reason why Campbell Hatton was put in that position in the first place, is because he has a famous dad. He's the son of... Ricky Hatton, who of course is a very accomplished, um, very well respected, very famous uh, former world champion from the UK. And they of course wanted to piggyback off of that by trying to market his son. Now immediately that rubbed me up the wrong way. And the reason why is because there are so many fighters in the amateur ranks, so many uh, novice pros, you know, guys who fight on small hall shows who have to work so hard, who have to achieve so much to get into a position where they can fight on TV and get some major exposure. And there's certain things that these guys have to have. First of all, they have to have talent, okay? You have to have the talent to compete at a certain level in boxing. You have to have some kind of excitement about you. And you have to have some sort of following, Okay, that's traditionally how it works in British boxing. You know, you start off in the amateurs, um, you win a few fights, you start building a name for yourself, uh, you progress through the ranks. Let's say you become a novice, uh, you become a bit more seasoned, you know, you start fighting in tournaments, and of course you have to win. And if you're a regular amateur who's basically doing this off your own bat and off your, off your own back and off your own merit, there's certain hurdles you have to overcome, okay, you might have to work a job while you're training, you know, you might have to deal with ignorant coaches, um, you know, an, an ignorant and inconsistent amateur officiating system where you could easily get screwed over and have your career messed up, and of course you have to really, really work hard, like amateur fighters in this country, it's kind of a, a Victorian system that they have, you know, in order for these guys to become... Uh, you know, televised professionals, like I said, you have to have a lot of these things, you have to build a following, right, you have to have fans, you have to have talent, you have to have a work ethic, okay, you have to be willing to make sacrifices, and you have to be able to earn that position. Campbell Hatton, on the other hand, had none of these things. You look at Campbell Hatton's professional debut, you look at any of his amateur fights, you look at any of his professional fights, and it's very, very clear to anybody who understands boxing that this guy is garbage. He has terrible punching technique. He has little to no stamina. 
Right? He has no defense whatsoever. He's physically weak. He's genetically very, very, you know, I would say he's genetically quite unfortunate. You know, he doesn't have any of the genetic gifts that his dad had. So, you know, that was the thing that his dad had going for him. You know, Ricky Hatton was obviously a, a very, very strong, in his prime I'm talking about, he was a very strong, very fit, very powerful, very durable, very exciting fighter, you know, big puncher, uh, great work rate, and he was a guy who had certain abilities that you can't really teach a fighter, you know, the kind of tenacity that you either have or you don't have. Ricky Hatton had it, which is why he was able to have such a successful amateur career, and he was able to work his way through the ranks as a professional, fighting on the small hall shows and whatnot. That's what professionals in this country have to do, typically and traditionally. Campbell Hatton, no. At 18 years old, he was just plucked out of obscurity. He had no... Like, he didn't have any kind of accolades to speak of from his amateur career. You know, he wasn't European champion. He didn't fight in a in, in an Olympic qualifier. I don't think he even won the ABAs. I mean, did he even win a novice tournament? Like, I don't know... I I have never heard of a single accomplishment from Campbell Hatton's amateur career, which would tell me that he had the talent to even turn pro. I haven't heard of anything. So the fact that they just plucked this guy out of obscurity and put him on the undercard of a televised heavyweight title fight, that rubbed me up the wrong way from the very beginning. I didn't really speak on it, but it, it really rubbed me up the wrong way as someone who knows a lot of people in boxing who have had to work really, really hard to get where they've gotten. Yeah, it didn't sit right with me at all. But it only got worse, because this guy, Campbell Hatton, despite the fact he had no fans, like, the, the guy cannot sell tickets, right? His his father's popularity clearly didn't tr didn't cross over to his popularity. You know, he wasn't able to get those, the, the, you know, those Manchester City... Uh, pisshead f football fans, you know, he wasn't able to get them on board, he didn't have a following of his own, he never worked his way up the ranks, proving himself as a professional, yet they continued to put this guy high up on the bill in undercard, of, uh, undercard fights of big, big televised events. They had this guy up on the bill higher than Dimitri Bevel, defending his world title, and I think I mentioned that at the time, briefly, I mentioned how disrespectful that was, that they had, <laughs> they had Campbell Hatton in, in, in like a, a six-round fight or something against some bum, topping the bill over Dimitri Bevel, I mean, that was an absolute disgrace, but yeah, they keep marketing this guy, they keep giving him constant promotion, and of course, he doesn't have to go through the, hur the hurdles that any other British low-level professional has to, you know, they were cherry-picking opponents for him who weren't punchers, guys who had losing records, guys who weren't very durable, who had been stopped before, who in many cases were smaller than him, and they were trying everything they could to basically fast-track this guy to popularity by, by padding his record, and <laughs> it just got so ridiculous because the guy was starting to become a bit of a meme, you know, people were calling him hands of foam, you know, they, they were they were openly, like, like, mocking the fact that this guy was topping the bill over much better, much more accomplished, and much more proven fighters, and it just got so ridiculous to the point where the, the guy literally became a living meme. I mean, they were putting this guy in, like, vaccine commercials, they were putting, <laughs> you know... They were trying to, like, act as if he was some sort of celebrity or some sort of influencer. And it just got so stupid. And now, of course, he's ultimately ended up losing to a an unknown opponent. Because what's interesting about it to me, like, what always fascinated me about the, the Campbell Hatton situation was... It was obviously very, very clear, as I mentioned before, that they were putting him in with non-punchers, specifically, right? Guys who just couldn't punch. And the reason for that is because he has absolutely no defense whatsoever. I mean, at least Ricky Hatton, like Ricky Hatton's defense wasn't great, but at least in his case, he had a good chin in his prime and he, he did actually move his head a bit and he could sort of smother your work inside and he had the physical strength and the stamina to go through a hard 12-round fight. 
Campbell can barely even go four rounds without gassing. He just doesn't look like a guy who really is built for boxing. And and I think the reason for that is because, like I said, he he's been he, he's he's basically the classic case of a of a somebody who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. You know, he's a guy who's never had to work a day in his life. He's a guy who's never really had to train or develop because that's what happens when you give a guy easy opponents and you put him on a pedestal and a big stage that he doesn't belong in. He doesn't really have to work. You know, it's a similar situation to what you have with Jake Paul. You know, he's a guy who can fight like some 47-year-old washed-up UFC fighter in a boxing match, and, and he, the fight will make millions of dollars. It, it, so he doesn't have to develop into a, into the best fighter or the best athlete that he can be. And the thing with Campbell Hatton is, it's, it, to me, that's worse than the Jake Paul situation, because at least in Jake Paul's case, he's a guy who already had an audience, okay? He was already famous on the internet and had thousands and thousands of people who were willing to pay tickets to see him fight, so... He was generating millions from his professional debut alone. Campbell Hatton, literally the only reason we've even heard of Campbell Hatton, the only reason the guy has ever been on TV, the only reason that any of his fights have gained like any mainstream media coverage whatsoever is because of his dad, is because he's Ricky Hatton's son. And I don't know about you guys, but to me, that's extremely cynical. And it just, it just irritates me. It rubs me up the wrong way. Like, to see a guy like Campbell Hatton plucked out of obscurity, out of nowhere, had no amateur accomplishments to speak of. Okay, again, had no fans to speak of. All right, you're not going to have have Campbell Hatton top the bill and, and sell out the MEN Arena in Manchester. You, you're not going to be able to do that, are you? Even if you put this guy on a small hall show, which is where he belongs... He doesn't have the talent or the charisma or the genetics or the excitement factor or just the ability to build an audience gradually and, and, and organically. He's not going to be able to do that. You know, say what you want about, say, somebody like Josh Warrington. The reason why Josh Warrington became such a good fighter and the reason why he became so popular is because, first of all, the guy worked his way through the amateur ranks, earned his right to turn professional earned his right to fight on small hall shows, built his audience, right, traveling all around the country, fighting on these small hall shows, okay, before he was on TV, you know, he was fighting dangerous uh, journeymen, you know, experienced guys, domestic level um, rivals, guys who were on his level, gradually increasing his opposition, fighting good punchers, good technicians, good athletes, uh, tough guys, you know, good survivors and spoilers, learning the game, learning his craft. Campbell Hatton has never had to do that. This guy was literally picked up. He's uh, out of absolute obscurity, never earned a single thing that he's ever achieved. Has really never achieved anything. All his fights were basically set up, cherry-picked bomb fights, and yet this guy's fighting on TV. I think, like, every one of his fights has been on a big undercard or has been televised. And and, and if it hasn't been televised, it is, he's, I'm going to assume he's gotten paid a lot more than he's generated. So, yeah, that, that's all I wanted to say. I know this was kind of a rambling video, but I, I think that the Campbell Hatton story, to me, it, it really highlights a big problem with boxing and how I'm sick and tired of the sons of former champions all of a sudden coming out of nowhere and, and just being put on these televised cards and being forced down our throats and being marketed as the next big thing. It just comes across to me as so cheap and so gimmicky. And, and I'm sick and tired of these gimmicks in boxing. So yeah, um, th that's kind of my uh, rambling thoughts on uh, on Campbell Hatton. I just wanted to say my piece here. I probably won't talk much about Campbell Hatton again because um, I, I don't want to make like rambling videos like this. I want to have more of a a point to what I'm saying, but yeah, this situation, it, it's annoyed me for a long time, and every time I hear Campbell Hatton's name or see his face, it just it just gets on my nerves, and, and it, it doesn't sit right with me, it rubs me up the wrong way, so yeah, I just wanted to get this out there, um, at least he's been exposed now, let's hope he just retires, because he's got nothing to offer, so yeah, thanks for watching, and God bless.